On 22nd September 2021, nearly 2,500 rhino horns were set alight by the Assam government in a mass burning of rhino horns that was seized in illegal wildlife trade since 1969. Among other wildlife, rhinos are protected against poaching and trading by the Wildlife Protection Act 1972 in India and the Convention on International Trade in Endangered Species of Wild Fauna and Flora, CITES. Despite a strong national law and a global agreement between nations, trade in wildlife continues at an alarming rate. Seizure reports over the years have demonstrated the massive scale of illegal trade in wildlife across India. Data over the last two years suggests an average of 12 wildlife seizures were reported every week in openly accessible media articles alone. These seizures included a diversity of endangered species ranging from rhinos to butterflies. The actual volume of trafficking is understandably much higher. What is it that makes people illegally hunt and engage in trafficking of our fellow species? Wildlife is trafficked for various reasons, and these reasons change from species to species. Elephants and rhinos, we know, get uh, killed for their uh, body parts, and this includes their horn and their tusk, which uh, fetch a really high price in the international market. But there's also a trade, pet trade for live turtles and live birds, and even geckos, which are in this pet market. Species like owls seem to be traded for their value in black magic and superstitious reasons. Even dead butterflies and beetles are part of collection. And the consumer of these products, the markets, the modus operandi that drive these networks is very different for different species and we're still trying to grapple with the scale of this and truly understand this very complex trade. This diversity of the trade, along with its covert nature, makes illegal wildlife trade highly dynamic and extremely unpredictable. Be it cash earning for local residents or high profit for international dealers in wildlife, the lucrative gains of illegal wildlife trade keeps the network going across geographies and national borders. Illegal wildlife trade is different in terms of volume as well. Uh, in joint operation between West Bengal Forest Department and Wildlife Crime Control Bureau, we have seen large confiscation of turtles as much as 1600 in a single seizure, which is really commendable. Uh, species like the Indian flapshell turtle, the Gangetic softshell turtle, the peacock softshell, the Indian narrow-headed softshell turtle, these are mostly in trade because they are consumed as meat. On the other hand, uh, among the tortoises, uh, the Indian star tortoises are uh, like traded as pets because they have demand both nationally and internationally. And many of these species are threatened. Illegal wildlife trade threatens our biodiversity in ways we are not able to fully measure and calculate. In the past, India has witnessed local extinctions of even the tiger populations in protected areas due to illegal hunting. People actually collect the parts which they think are important. Uh, in India, we, we know of the nails, skin, whisker, bones are important for illegal uh, trade. So that's where actually uh, a lot of people are look forward for having a nail for example within india also there's a huge market for tiger nail because they believe people believe that it gives prosperity and it is symbol of uh, power and actually wearing it also is a kind of status thing
However, what about the populations of species we cannot monitor, like pangolins? Uh, pangolins are uh, a very difficult species to study in the wild, primarily because they are very shy, uh, nocturnal species, they are also very elusive. So we found that for pangolins, it's actually much easier for, for communities to catch them, because they just have to identify a burrow first, and then they have to stake out the burrow. They have to wait at the burrow till the animal comes out, or if the animal is uh, coming in, pick it up and take it away. So it's that easy. So it doesn't attack back, it doesn't try to defend itself, it only rolls into a ball, when attacked, and it lies there. Pangolins are listed under Schedule 1 of the Indian Wildlife Protection Act of 1972, which means that they have the same level of protection as uh, tigers, or rhinos, or elephants, um, which means that uh, any hunting or trade in pangolins is uh, uh, punishable by law. It's a criminal offence. Unfortunately, pangolins are uh, uh, the most highly threatened species in the world because of illegal wildlife trade. Uh, and there's a lot of uh, myths uh, surrounding pangolins, which is the primary reason for their being, uh, you know, so widely hunted and traded. The Indian uh, pangolin and the Chinese pangolin, these two are the species of pangolins that are found in India. So our study, which we did from 2017 to 2019, the result is that pangolin numbers have declined very rapidly in the Eastern Ghats. And this is the same thing with pangolins across the world. They have become extremely rare and uh, the pr primary reason for this is hunting and trade. Adding another layer of challenge in tackling illegal wildlife trade is the way in which it is evolving online, the internet, that has created new routes that support and fuel illegal wildlife trade on private messaging apps and even on publicly accessible websites. This aspect has brought in the dimensions of 24-7 connectivity and immediacy of information transfer. Now, there is a growing market online for pets, collectibles, wild meat, traditional medicine and even for use in black magic. Added to this, the invisibility and swiftness of social media and online wildlife trade has created a whole new dimension to the challenges of surveillance, detection and prevention. Besides online sale in wildlife products, which is harder to locate, we often find certain hotspots where wildlife trade is reported repeatedly. Some of these are local markets, often hidden, where wildlife is sold as food or for the use in black magic and superstitions. Other hotspots are regions which act as transit points for transnational organized wildlife trade. There is also a lot that we do not know and to add to it, there is the complexity of overlap between illegal wildlife trade and other illegal organized trades such as arms trafficking, especially near international borders. Illegal wildlife trade can also potentially create pathways for zoonotic disease transfer which in turn can unleash pandemics that affect and cripple human societies and global stability in multiple ways. Irrespective of where the first humans came into contact with COVID-19, the fact that it came to us from wildlife seems very clear. At the global level, Illegal wildlife trade operates on a massive scale with complex illicit trafficking structures that facilitate the killing, transport and sale of species. How can we tackle this problem? Although India has very strong uh, wildlife laws, enforcing these hasn't been so straightforward. For instance, just detection itself very often needs to happen in remote areas, which is not so easy. And even when it's detected, either in the forest or in the markets, you still need to be able to investigate these crimes and prosecute these criminals in court. This requires very specialized trainings. More and more officers are getting such trainings, and even the judiciary is taking a lot of interest in wildlife cases. But there are a lot of challenges ahead of us and we must try and look at this beyond enforcement. We must try and find solutions which don't just rely on law enforcement and we must think about prevention. The web of life is 
Experts are increasingly focusing on behavior change and modern crime prevention techniques to look for solutions to tackle illegal wildlife trade. Beyond law enforcement, it is the citizens, the people of India's forests, villages, towns and cities, residents of illegal wildlife trade hotspots who can act in prevention solutions. But how does illegal wildlife trade impact citizens and why should people bother? Turtles and tortoises are an integral part of culture, mythology and religion in different parts of the world by eating algal blooms and scavenging on dead matter. They play a significant role in organic recycling. However, we still do not fully comprehend the ecological services that turtles and tortoises provide. Turtles are reliable indicators of health of ecosystems such as wetlands. In essence, turtles and tortoises can be considered as engineers of ecosystems. By focusing attention to freshwater turtles and tortoises, we hope to sustain positive human-wildlife habitat interactions and improve the conservation of freshwater habitats and all the species. Illegal trade in marine species, sea cucumbers, sharks, seahorses and sea fans has also seen a steep spike and is a cause of grave concern. Besides commonly known species in illegal wildlife trade, there are wild species which may be wiped off to the trade even before we become aware of their existence. Lesser known species in illegal wildlife trade is a very broad spectrum. Let us start with spiders. Tarantulas in the Western Ghats of India are an array of species and they are most sought after for the illegal pet trade. There is a variety of other species that are also included in the illegal pet trade that we come off every day. These include a list of geckos, right from the Toke gecko in the northeast India, the golden gecko, a whole lot of other species. Snakes, one of the most trafficked snakes, uh, which is the sand boa, is now looked at as a very serious concern for the illegal wildlife trade. There are pit vipers, pythons, the list is very long. We are still trying to understand on how this trade functions and how these species are in the trade as a whole. There are other species that are in the illegal wildlife trade as well. Dragonflies and damselflies and butterflies of course. India has a long list of butterfly species that are beautiful and are most sought after by collectibles. These include the Bhutan glory for that matter. Most of these lesser species which are in trade are across Northeast India as well as the Western Ghats. We do not know about what the impact of illegal wildlife trade is on these species. But we surely know that this can affect a whole lot of species and decline especially in their ecosystems. This is a matter of serious concern. Over the years, effective measures on the ground have been taken up by several government and non-government agencies. Wildlife Conservation Society India's Counter Wildlife Trafficking Program plays the role of a facilitator, enabling government officials to gain access to information, skills, technologies and expert support required to tackle wildlife-related crime in India. It supports mandated agencies to effectively prevent, detect, identify, investigate, arrest, prosecute and convict criminal organizations that perpetrate wildlife trafficking. With the complex levels and organized global networks of illegal wildlife trade, countering and dismantling it requires multi-sectoral and interdisciplinary integrated solutions and collaborative action. The media plays a vital role. Committee to me also the conservation of come claim no put it. Isiakirapit hidung bangila hello. 
Community tu mama ke cicini lo, mata itu mama le cicini lo, itu long ko pipi api si ke long ko nasi ke long ma ko mati ko sana ke nevera bang ma. La dah arisan ni doa lo, maybe lack of awareness tak tekpo kali tu aja tu mungkin ke la tu cicini pusing tu ame tangka ke nangji aja ni la tu isi ke joy ke bal la tu isi atau warlo pupen aja tu mungkin ke ke jor ke lang la sonda do ba aja tu mungkin ke apia a importance bate a value ke cicini ni pena jok si tu ame kapat si sonda do itu m kami ti tu mungkin si aku la soa la hai a illegal mate a run rapean Habis api itu kepati ba, orang repin kejor, la suak kami osi itu mington lo, lakin mi aku celarji, mati lahai orang repin kekle masaya itu sista mi kangton ji, mati kibirji atau war bangke joy kepo, mati atau war dopo. Children are the future. I've seen kids actually go in Arunachal Pradesh on bird walks and trying to convince their parents not to hunt barbets for food or for trade because uh, they look beautiful through binoculars. Kids have the power to convince parents as well as adults and society as a large. And I think that is an important aspect for us to consider. The other aspect of course is awareness. Creating awareness is very important for illegal wildlife trade in India. With awareness comes appreciation for species, especially for lesser known species and with that comes action. So it is very important for us to create as much awareness about the existence of illegal wildlife trade and its impacts in our country. Another important aspect is getting enforcement agencies to understand the importance of lesser known species and their impact of illegal wildlife trade on these lesser known species. Every single butterfly, every single snake is as important in the ecosystem in our biodiversity as much as a rhino, a tiger or an elephant. And this must be stressed for species to be saved or to be conserved for us as long as biodiversity conservation is important.